Here we go. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Fair okay, that's great. <clears throat> okay, so I'll just start. I'm going to share my screen. Pop that onto there. Okay, so I'm I'm diving right back twenty five years to uh, being at uh, leaving school, going and doing a foundation course, going on a a gap year, eight month travelling in Southeast Asia, and on the way back from that gap year, um, our aeroplane got hijacked, and I was held hostage for a couple of days, and so I survived this traumatic incident. When I got back, um, I had uh, interviews to go to, and one of them was for Central St. Martins for their constructed textile design. And so that's where this began. I specialised in screen printing. And then we're going zooming 10 years forward from that. And I left my partner that I'd been hijacked with and I started on a series of paintings and at the time I was really into yoga and tai chi and qigong and bringing myself into the moment uh, which made me more sensitive more sensitive to light and color and I wanted to express that through the paint and that's when I think I was really getting into something that philosophy describes as phenomenology. Um, just zooming forward again, another 10 years. And in that time, I've had my children, so they're age nine and seven around now. And I'm still into the question of reality, really, what is going on and trying to suss it out phenomenology so noticing all the things I'm experiencing and this one really I was pleased with this painting but it because it began to bring that together in the looking at things the sense of the self the breathing breathing and thoughts and I think that's what's going on there and then we're zooming forward again so I'm really hopping through time nice and quick we're at 2016 I'm feeling frustrated that I don't have my own art practice. I'm sort of weaving art around the family. I've done some, I've got other work to be done. And I'm also doing a bit of teaching after school art clubs and some adult art education. But, uh, can I, yes. Can I stop you a moment, Elaine. I, I, can anybody see your artwork? Because I'm not seeing it. Oh, you're joking. Really? Uh, no. Ah, I've, I've shown loads of things right now. I wonder what's going on. Hang on a minute. I've messed up here. So I've, do you know what I've done? I've just opened PowerPoint and been talking through it. So I'm really glad you've said that and I'll go share screen. Right. There you go. Thank you. Right, now I can zoom through this. You know the score. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. This is the Constructed Textiles um, course. There's a woven piece. Oh. And specialising in screen printing. That's just an early print from the first year. And I, at the moment, I don't have any other images digitised from that time. And this is um, the painting I was telling you about from 10 years on from that, that's just, you know, really into yoga and Tai Chi and feeling, you know, just becoming really aware of being in the moment in your body and all the sensations of looking at flowers and light and how that's sort of reflected in a feeling in your body. That's what I was really into. This is the one 10 years after that. So 
that sort of repetition of shape, which to me feels like presence. It feels like there's someone there looking and that's their breath and their thoughts and their filter. But also just playing with paint, just really enjoying. That's an oil on canvas and just being really experimental, if not a bit mental, yeah. And these are the ones um, I started doing because I felt like I don't have an art practice. I'm not getting a chance to really focus on it because, you know, I'm a mum and supporting our family business and things like that. So these are really small and I just started making them every day. I did it for about two months, any whatever the weather during the winter or anything get the overalls on, go outside. And I've made these little, uh, they're like a canvas on cardboard, sort of artist made little canvas boards. And then just being really experimental and just reacting to what's going on that day in my mind, but also what's around me. Now I'm just gonna click this the back so they're just really kind of improvised but this really this really sort of scratched an itch for me in following creating work basically And then I decided it was a little bit, um, I didn't want to just have to go outside to do my work. And I managed to make a studio in the home, but I needed to use acrylic paint. I hadn't used it before, so it just started a exploration of working with acrylic paint that's carried on just because it's easier within the home setting, basically. And this one's a, at that time, just an exploration, but it's something I want to go back to. I'm really, I sold that little painting, um, but I'm really interested in exploring the woods, but bringing it alive in this way. That one was with a lino cut and um, I'm, so I'm interested in the mind and I was looking at a brain coral and I love pattern. And so those things are, are coming out and again, in that one, that's acrylic on paper. Wow. More exploration. That one's a collage as well. And yeah, it's just a bit of fun. Is it a tree or is it a bottom? I don't know. <laughs> this one's on a wood panel and just, uh, I'm always seem to be interested in layers and colors coming through. And also I liked working in this where I've done a few of these on wood panel and you get the nice, slightly messy edges and um, worn so something from the wood. And I've kind of, um, I've actually got that, that one right here. I don't, can you see my screen with me on it as well? Yeah, but that's, yeah. that's that one. And it's, I've just sort of, cradled it myself but just with these little wood so it just sits off it just floats off the wall which is really nice I just like the feel of it um but I was when I was brought up in our family moved to the Isle of Wight to take over a one-man boat building factory and that was my mum and dad started building boats there so I was sort of surrounded with wood and machinery and boats being built so in 2018, um, I took over this room in our house. Uh, this is where my husband and I have taught loads of yoga, workshops, retreats. Um, and for that summer, I took it over for about four or five weeks. And I just wanted to try working on some big canvases. So, and that's midnight. Okay. So this is one of those big canvases. It's 190 by 140 centimeters and just a chance to explore. 
And um, recently I've been listening to Amy Silman as I don't know if you guys have done that, but um, she's answered a lot of things that seem to be a problem for me um, in that I really value when I'm working not to know what I'm doing. Um, and she's kind of legitimized that for me. So, uh, in fact, I wrote a little quote down. Because she says, I kind of like the idea of working with one hand behind my back in a way um, to make myself not know or not be good at it or not quite understand to disorient myself. While I'm working, it's kind of a system in a sense because I'm trying to keep the part where I don't really know what's going to develop. I try and keep that part going as long as I possibly can. And that's really uh you know where i've been but i've i've always thought i should know so i've been kind of almost waiting to when i'm going to be smart enough to work this out and be able to tell everyone exactly what i'm doing and and for myself to know exactly what i'm doing because my training was in design it wasn't in fine art so really i'm a self-taught fine artist and i'm just having to suss this stuff out maybe like everyone else has to anyway um but yeah she's legitimized that for me it's like oh I can let go of that that is a cool thing to do not to know so here we go another big one 190 by 140 all sorts of things going on in fact I've written a blog in my website where I've just added notes that I made after making this work um so it's a way to get into it a little bit, what was going on in my mind, really, while I was making it. Well, some of it anyway. It's another view of that really fabulous space. I don't have access to that now. I just had it for that four week block, but I really used it, putting boards down to protect the floor. And uh, yeah, a chance to work big. It makes such a difference, the scale you're working on, doesn't it? It's incredible how it changes the work. This one is called Silent Pool, same size again. And just using the whole body really to make these marks is a completely different thing. So because I'm into phenomenology and I'm into observing, you know, what's going on in my mind, but it's also my body because they're one, aren't they, mixed up. And just to be able to sort of like really express full arm movements and big washes, it yeah, it's an immersive experience, which was what I needed to do to express the sea or that feeling of silence, being with yourself in the sea. This one's a little bit later and I'm experimenting with hard edge painting and it was really good fun. You know, with the masking tape and uh, I just wanted to really get those sort of veils of colour and, and depth and a sense of all over perspective and experiment with that style of painting which now I feel I've got it in my toolbox if I need to draw on it. This one is called Up and it's not so big. It's something like 80 by 60 and again, big brush marks sing through to behind. This is at the similar time, layers and color. And just finding colour, sort of a fascinating, indescribable experience, all of itself. There's a painting in situ. So that painting's been a bit of an enigma for me. Out of the four that I made, it seemed to be, when I showed other people, uh, they kind of were drawn to it and like, oh, oh. 
and, and I would say, oh yeah, it's not finished though. I'm going to do some more on that. And I got no, <laughs> you know, from quite a few people, leave it, leave it how it is. And it was sort of against my instinct. I wanted to do more and more and I left it. And over a bit of time, I sort of went, oh, okay. Oh yeah. And so it stayed like that, but I've, I've, it's almost an enigma because of I painted it not knowing what I was doing. Although I can go back and analyze it and go, well, I use that kind of paint. I use that kind of canvas. I used a dry brush that, you know, and I have, I've done that um, a lot. And I just, it's, it's so much more in a painting than just the steps of what it is. There's so many little adjustments and I've learned a lot from trying to recreate that and not manage, well, not recreate it, but trying to paint like it and not managing. So it's sort of frustrating, but it's a good lesson as well. Elaine, uh, yeah. I think there's somebody trying to get in. Oh, 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 I wonder how I do that. Uh, in the waiting room. Participants um, at more. Oh, God. Sorry, we should have. No, got... no, it's good. It's good. Four people entered the waiting room. View. Okay. I think. We have a load more people. I'm sorry about that. I haven't <coughs> noticed that. Yeah. It's funny because I ticked the box beforehand that meant people could just come in. But obviously, maybe once it started running or something. Yeah, and I don't know. I'm sorry, we should have organised that one. <laughs> Oh, it's, sort of, all, it's a big learning curve, this. Never done this before, so. No, it's fine. It's all good. Thank you for saying. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you. No worries at all. So, so it's you and my little enigma. Oh, I just had to add this in as we move from 2018 into 2019 that my mum passed away sort of like a minute past midnight. She just went, I'm not doing 2019. And I'm, I'm adding it in because, you know, painting after that oh. sort of changed my painting for a bit. And uh, there's a sense more of, I mean, this this is you know, heavily layered, but there's a real sense of undoing, but also of love, I'd say, or and confusion at times, or just simplicity, perhaps confusion, enjoyment, childishness. Yeah, definitely. And that's the same year. And this one is really hard to photograph. And I wish I could show you it better, but it's an oil painting. You can see it's sort of heavily layered. And this dark layer around the edge is over the top of this. And although it's a really is a sharp circle, the, the lines, all the lines coming up to it are all horizontal. So it has its own kind of brush stroke presence as well. But you'll have to believe me about that unless you come to visit the Isle of Wight and then you can have a look. So a bit of fun. Layering again and just Again, not knowing, just letting myself experiment and approach the piece with a blankness and allowing it to create itself. This one. Mm -hmm. This one happened in two parts. It was uh, 
really wanting to work outside sort of on plein air and ugly duchess going to a garden and uh then i just put it away for ages and i didn't know what to do with it and um the the second part came from listening to music so having earphones on and listening to a and that really opened up the subconscious and allowed me to interact with it in a quite complex way. Detail of the next painting. So another series here and, and another one. So that's, um, this is 2020 now. And just really letting rip on the layering and the color. A whole series of these, they're about uh, A, A5, A4 on card. And that whole thing that Amy Seelman's saying about not knowing what you're doing and also kind of working with one hand tied behind the back, sort of finding that or allowing a sort of clumsiness to happen, which if you, in the other side of your brain, you just want to make things neat or have smooth edges or, so that's, this is what I'm going for. I really like this one. The horizontal lines for the sense of filter. On cardboard, everybody worked on cardboard in 2020. It was a real, that's all you could get hold of, wasn't it? Whatever you had in and whatever was coming through the place. But I love cardboard, love the texture, and I love the fact it costs nothing. I really like the freedom that that brings from not working with expensive materials. So these ones are just from going out, going walking, and uh, then experimenting with the paint to look at silhouettes and sort of the last light of the day. just a series of small abstracts or whatever they are also live right near these cliffs which are quite irresistible to go and sit next to but not too close obviously at the bottom quite far away and this is a series of work from being in the midst of the cliff Really enjoying texture, brush marks. So that one fell in the sand, as you can see, and it just made some nice texture, pastels. So I really like working outside on location if I can. This one was done in the studio, it's kind of. And in that, it kind of got a little bit of something extra from not being there. I can't tell you what that is at the moment, but that's on wood panel. That's about A3 size with cradling. So it just floats off the wall. Here's another series, and I am I am telling you a bit of my life story as well because it just seems to affect what comes out. And just with this one, my kids had 
just grown up and basically left home and I found that um, there is one of them and that's Louis came to visit me while I was going off into the woods and just getting really absorbed in all of this kind of stuff the light on the bark and the peeling and the decaying trees and I really got to enjoy the the silver birches that were kind of breaking down and decaying and it just felt a little bit like uh you know that empty nest feeling if you've ever if you're if you can imagine you know you've put all your life into this and then it <laughs> and then they go and you there's a little bit of a like oh who am I where am I and uh a sort of a letting obviously a letting go and somehow the snags, the fallen trees and me, we could get together in the woods. And I just, I made a, a little cushion out of an old Ikea bag with felt in it so I could sit on the floor. And I was this strange lady in the woods drawing with the colored pencils. And um, I really like David Hockney and I like his, I love his, you know, paintings in nature and something that he says about the more you look, the more you see. And that's what it made me think of there because uh, as you all know, it is, it's like that. If you're doing observation and I'm obviously doing observation, but it's still phenomenology. It's still how I feel. And it's, a, it's like a springboard, the looking and the seeing is like a springboard to the materials and what's coming out on the page. So that's not my drawing, that's the real thing. It's so beautiful. I'm just really getting into some detail and sort of watching the beetle larvae eat up the wood. I sort of felt like I was being absorbed by the woods. It was. And it gets a bit anthropomorphic. And this one was probably one of the last ones that sort of saw me off in November. And it felt like something from the woods, but it was getting a bit dark to be up there. And um, but I just felt really connected in. So this is another phase. And this is uh, tapping into the subconscious and getting up really early in the morning before you've spoken to anyone or looked at your phone or engaged with anything else and just having the material set up and just there you go just a few of those but I did a lot a lot a lot which just felt like uh, getting in touch with the language what come what's coming through me and then I got a commission to make a painting and it was a little bit heavyweight because the person is ill and they wanted it for their wife. But, you know, so it was a bit like, oh, that's a bit much for me to manage to do. Um, and so I skirted around trying to do it. So quite a lot of the paintings that came out were me trying to approach this commission, which he wanted to, it to be in the woods. And uh, luckily, I just spent loads of time in the woods. And that one just snuck in at the time, more space. And here's a detail of a painting that came out at this time and that really worked for me. I think it came from doing those morning things of the tapping into my language and my natural, my natural sort of painting, but it's also a bit crazy too. And it wasn't right for the commission, but it worked for me. And that one with more space. And then this one became the commission and this satisfied the brief and it lives with them and they're happy with that. So that's okay. It was a real relief to get that done. And then after that, 
I could just get on with sketching log piles. Wood in the wood burner, it's last December now. And just again, sort of knowing what I wanted to paint, but also not knowing how it was going to come out and letting that happen. And I liked the characters that were coming out of the wood, the burnt wood. Do you know what I would, next time I do this, I'd have a little thing so I know how long I've been talking because I've got absolutely no idea. What did you say, Jane? Oh, have I got one, do you? <laughs> did you say half an hour? I think I could lip read that. Yeah, half an hour, yeah. Okay, that's cool. I'm just gonna whiz through. These are for the Turks upload. Um, there's a Turks upload happening, except for that one, which is with the, can you see my cursor on the screen? Yeah. yeah, except for that one, which is going back to 1999. Ooh. Obviously, I didn't upload that one. I didn't cheat. So work in progress. Far too much stuff going on. <laughs> Looks better as a detail. Uh, and what he, <laughs> what my... Uh, mentor set me is take this other painting I can't show you it now and he said this is a great painting why don't you try and make six or seven in that same vein and that was just a, like my room 101 as I said before about the, the big blue painting uh, so I did analyze the painting that he wanted me to do that to but I, and I learned a lot in trying to satisfy that. And at times it seemed to work, but I was working quite small, which was frustrating. And I just put this page in because I use sketchbooks a lot and that's, and that's typical. There's midnight. There's an upload for Terps, trying to work out what I'm putting in. And then I worked sitting outside, painting from some trees outside as a starting point. And I'm just going to flick through those. That's a lot of trees. They're A4. And I just, I really got into the painting. It's obvious. That's on canvas, that's from the same series, but it's the first one I've worked up larger and onto canvas. And it looks a bit weird in this photo, the backgrounds, the wall should be white, but that is the colors of the painting. And I was quite pleased with it because I managed to lay off it a bit and not carry on working on it. This is now, so the ones around the bottom I've, you've already seen and these, up here I'm working on at the moment. So there, I mean, that's just a step and I'm not sure I'll paint any more on it because it's a way of painting that I haven't really managed to do like that before. So I'm just gonna keep it to look at. There it is. There it is again, but it's in between those two colors. That's the other one that I'm working on. That was experimenting with a canvas that is too absorbent. It's actually a cotton. And so I did that to it. And I'm just finishing on that bit of cardboard painting because I like it. So. And show. So I guess, 
don't know what to do with that. Um, go back to participants. Oh, stop sharing screen. Stop share. There. <laughs> wow, there's a, a lot, a lot to take in. Yes. Um, I loaded it with slides. I absolutely did. Of course. <laughs> They're very beautiful, actually, and you you do have um, I can see your you know your your language, your signature in in what you do. It, oh, it, thank you, Jane. Some of them, maybe, do you know? I'm sure you know Hilma Af Klimt. Yes, yes. Looking forward to that. It's kind of a feeling of that about it, except oh. yours have got more movement and more layering. I I feel. That's lovely. Thank you. I'm yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Mm. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, Elaine. I think they're wonderful. And I love the way that your small ones transfer so easily to your bigger ones. It's and still kind of retain that lightness of feel almost, you know, um, you. kind of spontaneity, because I know myself, it's kind of hard sometimes to transfer a, a little study to. Absolutely. Big, big. Yeah. And it, thank you for saying that, because it doesn't seem to work like that. I feel like I'm making something completely new and different on the bigger one. I can never no. go like, oh, I'm going to work from that. Do you know what I mean? No, to me, like if I didn't, if you hadn't put the measurements on the screen, I, I kind of I wouldn't realize that the big one was a, a big version of the small oh, one or that it, transferred so well you know because it's difficult as you know with a little one and you're doing these gestural things but you can actually transfer yeah. to a big yeah kind of thing yeah so um i love Thank that you. kind of spontaneity that that appears in your work i think it's brilliant and Thank um you. yeah and i kind of empathize with you when you're trying to explain what you're doing but i think you did it very well <laughs> thanks so much thank you yes i am a greenhorn total so it's been a bit like it appears very accomplished yeah, so it doesn't it certainly doesn't look like the work of a green <laughs> no. sure. thank no. you very much very kind yeah <laughs> Erling, can i ask when you talked about um what's her name uh amy silman yes yes Do, were you watching her somewhere or were you just reading her yes i've been listening there's a really good podcast called a brush with okay um if you just looked up if you just looked up amy silman and then looked up videos on google she's because she's such a great uh she says oh well i'm a nerd but she's she's written an amazing book called faux pas okay yeah and but if you did that looked on videos there's several videos of her talking about drawing about shape about color yeah really recommend um I also i really love your use of color and i love layering 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 i love all those techniques that you're using they look thank fantastic. you thanks very much brenda that's great okay so maybe is it time jane that yep. we yeah and i've pressed that button so you should be able to share your screen Okay, um, well, I, I'm starting off with um, a video that I took um, a few weeks ago in my studio. Um, I can work this one out. Um, There we go. So it's a bit quiet, I'm afraid. So you might have to turn up your your sound. Oops, switch it on. Hi, <clears throat> my name's Jane Fellows, and I've been at this studio now for nearly twenty five years. I um, set up the studio group from 1999 
and became a, became a charitable organisation in 2004. <coughs> this is not my original studio, which was uh, in the same building, but in another place. I've been in here since about 2008, I think. So 2017, 18, I started making paintings of some textile pieces, of which these are some. Um, I since pulled them out. <clears throat> the backgrounds were originally were all white, but since I've been doing turps and sort of had some advice about thinking about the background, I've actually changed the background and repainted them. Just going to spin around quickly, so I don't make you dizzy. So um, three more paintings here. <coughs> Pardon me. These are based on some plastic pieces that I've collected, which again I've just reworked them, repainted the backgrounds. The backgrounds to these were all grey. These are based on some small plastic sculptures, which are over here on the show. Violet print stick. Over the top. And I repainted it over here. And again, I've just pulled a lot of these out and given them a fresh background. This one too. And this one. They're kind of like these are not new paintings, but they are and as much as I've, I've taken on the look at them. I also did a series during lockdown of my garden. <clears throat> this is one. You've exaggerated size of the tree and I've just stylized some of the, the hedges and plants. And this is another one that I did, which is from uh, winter. Again, I've repainted this. I think the thing about doing the turps course that's been really quite amazing <clears throat> is that I've just re-looked at work that I've made previously unseen that it's not finished. And so I've started to finish those pieces of work. Let's put this on back. These are some more pieces that I've made, again, from shards of plastic that I found just lying in the fields near where I live. And then a couple of still ones. I just peered open to the one which I want to note. Pardon me. This is an older piece of work that I've made, which is an acrylic. I usually paint in oils these days. This is based on um, a Chardin painting. But I've replaced the animals with um, toys, as you can see. <coughs> I'm kind of like my messy table. And we keep things like solvents, oils, um, brushes. This again is really good having has that frozen for everyone, or is it carrying on? Frozen? Yes, it's frozen. Frozen, yeah. Okay. Um, frozen. I wonder, I wonder if it's the Wi-Fi connection. I would guess that's what it is, yeah.
Has Jane gone? Yes, she disappeared. Oh. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go in another room and plug into the ethernet, which I only just learned this morning that I really needed to do and I couldn't do it at that point and it seemed to be working. So, let's... Right. So I discovered this morning that uh, most of uh, Amy Silman writings are on her website. Yes, yes. Not most, but... Uh, Thank where you. Has Jane gone? Hmm. That's strange. It might be that the film made her crash. Maybe she's had to come, come, yes. to come back in again. Yes. Uh, she's she's not in the waiting room or anything trying to get back in, is she? No. Oh. Sometimes my system crashes. I have to restart it all, and it takes ages. So she's maybe she's. I'll just get my phone and, and WhatsApp first. Yeah, Amy Silver did a wonderful thing for Mama in um, New York, and I think there's a beautiful PDF. She, she did it on form. She looked at all the at work in the Museum of Modern Art about form. It was really, it's really great. I think you might see that on the Museum of Modern Art website. Okay, what's, the, what's the museum again? Which museum? I think it's MoMA, New York. Oh, MoMA. Oh, yeah. thank you. Okay, Jane says, my computer has just crashed. Mm. It's starting up again now. Sorry for the delay. This is why I don't like computers. So she will be back any moment. Hello, I didn't get the chance to 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 tell you, Elaine. Uh, I was yes. late. I'm very sorry. Um, no worries. I was astonished by your um, pencil, uh, colored pencil drawings of the trees. Oh, thank you. It must be uh, of great help for your paintings, uh, drawing so well. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I mean, I drew in a certain way up there on paper, um, but I often draw in sketchbooks quite differently to that, you know, very loosely or, um, but something about all the, when you start looking at the trees, the detail, so much there kind of made me behave like that. And then, I love those. I love those drawings. Of beautiful drawings. I thought, thank you. They felt quite bodily. It felt like your body. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And I was saying before that that I'm really into sort of phenomenology and uh, sort of feeling, looking and feeling into your body. And yes, so yeah. that's great. Where's Jane? I will let's try again. No, it's a shame. Has Jane sent you her presentation or no? No. She was do I just did it so she could share her screen. Oh. Because she could have commented it uh, with her phone. Right. Yeah, yeah. She didn't. I don't know. But when it crashes, it can take ages to get it all back again. Or mine yes. takes ages anyway. Yes. Where are you based, Erling? I'm sorry, I missed the beginning as well. Yes, and this is my husband's Zoom account, so he's, he is Erling. Oh, you're is, not. You're, yeah, you're, you're, he's, he's half Norwegian, and he's, so he's oh. Erling, and I'm Elaine. You're Elaine, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm on the Isle of Wight. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Now your work feels very joyful and full of light, sort of inner light. Thank you. Thank you. Right. 
She's trying to get back in. Oh, okay. Da, 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 da. Are you happy with your small paintings uh, of trees that your your mentor recommended? Um, I'm well. The the small paintings. Hang on, I've just got to find the waiting room. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's fine. But um, Erling, would you be able to see where the waiting room is? Okay, didn't mean to do that. Right. Thought this was It'd be a lot easier. So what I can't do at the moment. Oh, admit, admit. Here we go. <laughs> ah. oh. Oh, where, is where is she? She's coming, she's coming. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm, I'm just a blank. Sorry, I'm so late on this. I'll try and. Uh, I don't know if you saw most of the film in the studio, but I'll just I'll start running through my um, PowerPoint presentation now. Yes, brilliant. Sorry about that. So, uh, well, I've always called myself a multidisciplinary artist. Uh, I went to Art College, Liverpool Art College, in the nineteen seventies. Um, um, so I paint, draw, work with mixed media and textiles. Uh, but I've, I've always had the desire to just paint from a very distant memory of my first years at school when I was about four. The first time I, able, I stood in front of an easel with a paintbrush and did some painting, that sort of thrill of it just um, really inspired me. Oh, God, bloody computer's gone mad, sorry. Um, so this is just to show you some paintings. There we go. Um, I made in 2005-2006, uh, I was looking at paintings by Hokusai and I just really enjoyed the joy of, of the, the work that he did, but I, I, re I took his paintings, I replaced the bird in, in the painting with this Vanitas figure of a plastic doll with a um, bird skull. And I call them free falling because at the time it's like we were free falling into an uncertain future, become even more uncertain. So in 2019, I was invited to show these and another three paintings because I'd, I'd sold a few of them. So I made three more in. Jane, do you want to share your screen? I don't think you're sharing your screen. Oh, sorry. Um, let me see. Sorry about that. Share screen. Right. Okay, here we go. Hope it doesn't happen again. Oh. Okay, so yeah, like they're called free fall. Oh, as I explained, the, the idea is that we're, we're free falling into this uncertain future. So I've always made work um, that was to do with was politically orientated or to do with either environment or consumerism, capitalism, uh, and, and feminism. These are the things that have, have always kind of sparked artwork for me. Um, so I'm just going to show you now some textile work that I made. These are, I'd been doing a lot of research into um, ancient protective devices like amulets and talismans and fetish objects, because we were sort of entering into that period of time when Donald Trump was coming into power, Brexit was happening. And as an individual, there's absolutely nothing you can do to sort of to change those things. And so I looked at this ancient protective way of creating something and I made these these large sculptures and the idea was that they'd send out this power that would change the world but failed utterly unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so a close up of so an amulet is created from uh it's it's about sort of deflecting or reflecting uh, evil or um 
illness and it, it, asymmetry, shiny objects, twisted threads, nazars, evil eye beads, dots, knots, anything that sort of like distracts sound, bells, things like that as well. It's a close up of one, so you can see I've, I've sewn on um, buttons. All of these things are, are recycled. I know somebody who makes her own clothes, so she passes her fabrics on to me. Um, and I put these together and all the buttons and the beads and the things are all things that I've inherited from my mum, from, from my grandma, from my aunts. Um, so I very much got into this idea of looking at uh, female knowledge. Um, 2017. So 2017 was when I sort of made the decision that I really wanted to, to just concentrate on painting and put all the mixed media and textile work that I was doing to one side. So I've always felt the need to respond to what's going on around me and try to bring some of that into my paintings. And whilst I don't imagine that painting will have any effect, effect on anything in terms of what is happening in the world, I feel it can be part of a climate of resistance. So I make work that's in series and research is an important part of my practice. Themes and subject matter are dynamic and subject to change as new connections surface across the body of the work. I just found this yesterday and I thought, well, that does describe what, what I try to do. So in terms of painting, I wanted to paint something that was like an abstract. In other words, people hadn't seen it before, or didn't know what it was. But I'm actually painting a still life of the textiles. And these are a couple of the first ones that I made. They're only small. 25 by 25, or this way, that way. So I painted it one side and then painted uh, the view from the other side. And these are some more paintings that I did. This one and this one are both paintings of actual textiles. This one is one I created from my imagination. So I'm collecting lots of patterns from going into charity shops and photographing clothes, looking at fabric designs in fabric shops and online. And then you saw these in the video that since I've been doing Terps, my mentor was saying, well, why are they just sort of floating in this sea of nothingness? So this one is now being repainted. This one on the right hand side here. And I, I think it just grounds them and sort of brings them more into a more pictorial space. There's a couple more again to be repainted. The one on the left is a painting of a textile. And I started giving them these female deity names because I was researching why women had been left out of the human story. Um, and part of that was sort of looking at these female deities from the past. And Baba Yaga is this kind of witchy figure that flies through the forests in sort of Russia. She can be a malign or she can be a good spirit. And the one on the right, Lema, is a female deity for childbirth. So I created this one for my imagination with the stuffing sort of bursting out like it's about to, about to give birth. And then I carried on developing my own work from these, using these patterns that I'd collected. And I painted this one on the left. I didn't give it its title Medusa until I'd, I'd finished it, but it looked to me like it was all these coily snakes just wrapping around what looks like male genitalia. Because I think Medusa was um, badly served, I think, by the mythology. And again, the one on the right is called Mother Love. When it's lovely to have your mother sort of embrace you and enclose you, but at the same time, it can be quite cloying um, and stop you from sort of breaking free. I, because I've been doing a lot of research into the female, um, I learned about the distaff, which up until about 200 years ago, women um, would always be spinning and they'd have this three pronged stick uh, that would have raw wool on it. And they would, any bit of spare time that they had, they would be spinning yarn to make into fabric. It's only, we've become so used to sort of buying fabric or buying clothes. It was never like that in the past. All of those things had to be handmade and, and homespun. Um, so I decided to make a little series of pieces. I, I, we've got a local blacksmith, so I commissioned him to make 
the stands for me. Um, and the distaff side is, is still a term that's used in, in law for the female side of the family. I thought that was quite interesting, but it just shows how strong the distaff has been throughout all our female history. So this is a smaller version of one of these amuletic pieces. It's about 15 to 20 centimetres high. And I'd been looking at, um, oops, Dutch 17th century, 18th century paintings, looking at Vermeer and uh, a, a female painter called Rachel Rouge, who made a very good living sort of painting Vanitas paintings. Um, she's become a bit more known now, but in her time, she supported her husband and, and her family with her, with her painting. Uh, these are painted on limewood boards that are usually used for icons, and I, I liked the idea of um, replacing the icon, which is this sort of Christian image with this old pagan image of, of an amulet, but it still serves exactly the same purpose. I, I then moved on, I started developing some new paintings that came from the textile works. And these aren't finished and I will return to them at some point in time, because I seem to be doing that since I've been doing Terps. But I was just starting them really tentatively, didn't really know what, where I was going, what I was doing with them when um, lockdown happened. So I was locked out of my studio. Um, I had some paints and some materials and obviously spent the next six months at home. Unfortunately, I have a, a, a lovely garden so I was then sort of thrown into a whole new way of thinking about landscape. And these are some of the early pieces that I produced, sort of semi-abstract looking at sunbeams coming through foliage. Um, and then these are a couple of later ones. I did loads and loads of drawings of flowers in the garden. I painted vases of flowers. The weather was, was beautiful in sort of April, so I was able to spend a lot of time outside. I quite like to get a sort of air of sense of mystery in the things that I paint. Um, so this one, Beyond the Gate, I don't know who's gone through it or who's about to come through it. Um, ghost trees, these sort of glowing, you've got these Himalayan silver birch in the garden, and in the evening twilight, the, the, the light is just makes them sort of glow in this very eerie way. I'm going to, this is com something completely different now. <laughs> um, in 2019, I was one of 10 artists who, who were accepted onto a, what was called a talent, talent programme for artists over 50, working with Castlefield Gallery in Manchester. Um, we were supposed to be visiting lots of studios um, and going to see exhibitions, but with lockdown happening, we couldn't do that. Anyway, we, we were rewarded with a final exhibition at Castlefield Gallery. It's not an easy place to get an exhibition, so it was, it was really good to be there. Um, it was called Obstructions, and each of the artists that were involved, which is the 10 over 50 artists, over, age over 50 artists, and some younger artists as well, gave one another an obstruction. And mine was to work with only recycled materials and to focus on plastic. So <clears throat> I went round to my local fields. I think I was like, expected to go to the seaside and buy lovely, clean, sort of um, sea-washed plastic. But I went round my local fields because what a lot of people don't realise is that the compost that comes in from sewage works is full of plastic. And so I collected bags and bags of these, what I call plastic shards. Um, and the piece that I made, I called it, a global seam of plastic. So with the idea that you know, in 2000 years time or whatever, if there are still archeologists, they'll wonder what on earth we did because they'll be digging up all of this plastic. So I can show you one little piece here, this one. There's that little piece there. I think it's about 34 pieces, I think, all together. So what I did, I got cardboard, again, fantastic material. I um, put two pieces of cardboard together with the, uh, the ridges of the cardboard going opposite direction so that they would stay flat, glued them together, and then put 
several layers of white gesso on and then painted them with watercolours. Um, 2020 to 2022. So having been thrown back into my garden during lockdown, which was very nice, and I spent a lot of time sort of digging and, and um, developing my vegetable plot, extending it to some extent. I then threw myself back into um, making paintings of the garden with an aim of sort of just trying to capture the atmosphere of, of the place. Now this is a spring painting, it's 100 by 100, and I just wanted to get that amazing glow of green that you get in, in the springtime. The next one is, I call it Protean. Um, I've, made the, I've made the tree sort of extra large to try and give it, there's a kind of uncanny feeling which I try to create in my work so that's there's never a human in there, but there's always the presence of the human because of the fact that it's, it's been tended, or it could be the moment just after the apocalypse and there are no more humans and before nature's sort of like taking control uh, once more in the garden. And there's a springtime one, so there's a water. Again, there's a sort of like um, dynamism to, to the way that the plants are the wind blowing through the Virginia creeper and this rudbeckia that have these lovely twisty sort of petals. So it's like a, it's alive, the garden's sort of full of life. Okay, on the right hand side, it's that lovely balance of the, the whites and the greens and the ochre colours together. And then two winter ones. Again, there's no human presence. There's a coldness to the, the light on the topiary and yet, the vibrant sort of sunsets that we had through that, from that, that summer through until last, until last year as well. Um, another one, which I think was part of that video, um, again, an old cherry tree in the garden with a path underneath it. So the next one's different again. Brexit happened. I had to respond to it with paint. And so I painted a series of about nine or 10, which were all just images of places that were isolated. Um, so this is a, <clears throat> a little tower that I found. I had a photograph of it I'd taken in Brittany. Um, this is Billinge Hill, which is very close to where I live. And it's where they would, because we're along the, the West Coast. So when the Armada was arriving, there would be fires lit all along, and this is one of those, those areas. It's quite an ancient area. It's got this little tower on the top. This has got a blocked up window, but no door. So no way in, no way out. And then finally, um, this is one of these Scottish rocks um, that was sort of like a fortified house. This one was accepted for an exhibition in Cork, um, but again, unfortunately, because of lockdown, it had to be called off. So it, it was, was never seen. I think I finally showed it in, in an, an exhibition in Wales. And then I'm really into Shard and I just love his work and I'd, I'd recently sort of almost rediscovered it I suppose <clears throat> and so I wanted to do a little series of my own still lives. Um, the actual still life part is very smooth painted with a brush. Again these are on lime wood boards over black gesso. And then the backgrounds, I've just used the palette knife to create a sort of like much rougher, swirlier texture. So you've got this still knife, but you've got this lot of sort of movement and dynamism in the background. Okay, from all the plastic that I was collecting from the fields, I made a whole series of small sculptures, which you saw in my, the video. Um, I put these together and then I, I use them as subject matter for painting. So I'll just go back to this one here, this painting. And all of those paintings, I painted them on a grey background. And again, the mentor at Turp said, well, why are they all sort of floating in this grey background? I actually, my choice in doing this was because I was really influenced by Japanese art and this kind of flatness. 
some of the background. But uh, having taken advice, I then repainted the backgrounds. And I think, again, it just sort of grounds them a bit more. They're still shiny wet here in the photograph, but they've got such a gleam on them. And I've just rewritten my artist statement. God, it always takes me so long to write these things. So my subject matter drawn from the world around me, things that catch my eye whilst walking or traveling, my own textiles or mixed media sculptures, my garden, all areas from which I draw my ideas. Using oil paint often over acrylic, underpainting on both new and pre-used canvases, panels and boards. I use both brush and palette knife to create smooth and textured areas. I make quick sketches, taking photos and using my memory. I select images and using processes of editing, selecting and omitting. I create images in which the emphasis is on the compositional elements of colour, line and shape. So the, the group of 10 artists that were chosen from Greater Manchester, we've been, we've really gelled together and we've been exhibiting together. Um, we did an exhibition in St Helen's World of Glass called Through the Looking Glass. So these are images looking into my pond, which had a sort of light covering of ice over the top. And this one, a, a reflection again, a portal in, in ancient times, water was seen as this portal to the underworld, but it also reflected the heavens above as well. So it always had this kind of magical presence to it. There's another one, you've got air bubbles just underneath the ice, but you can still see all of the plant life underneath. The next two I'm going to show you are the first that I put for review to Turks, and I'm looking at them now and thinking, I don't know why I chose these two pieces because they're, they're totally unfinished. But I was trying to sort of like move more towards abstraction. I became sort of like obsessed with this idea that I wanted my work to be more abstract. Um, I've actually put these to one side now and I, I'll either pull them out and paint over them or I'll repaint them. I'm not quite sure what to do with them yet. And these are another couple I was looking at. I've been pointed in the direction of Thomas Noskowski, who's an American painter, and he does or he, he did what, what I now do, which is sort of walking most days. I'll be looking at the ground quite often and the way that the light changes and the, when the rain falls, it exposes different things. I live in a kind of post-industrial area, so there's lots of stuff lying around in the ground um, from that period of time. So these are a, a couple of imagined pieces that I did from sketches that I made. I keep copious sketchbooks. I write in them every day as a sketchbook diary. I'm just trying to... Um, so from those, I'm going to just move back to some more of these paintings I made from plastic. Sorry for jumping about like this. Uh, again, repainted them and repainted the backgrounds to make them much stronger. And I've given them all titles from um, the constructivists or connections with the constructivists because I quite like the fact that they were trying to make art that was for the people and that was useful and was not um, an elitist subject. This is another one. I think this is the one that I feel works most successfully. It had a grey background previously as they all did um, but I think I've just filled the space better and I like the balance of colours and again it's, it's like a piece that's, that's grounded before it was just floating and this one is floating but I quite like the fact that it's floating in this kind of again this sort of quite mobile um, background so I, I've also sent in um, some landscape paintings uh, again, I've worked on this one, having had um, some help from my mentor or some advice. Before it was it was too busy, it was full of things, it had some blobs all the way around here. Um, and he um, suggested looking at Max Ernst, who's a, a painter that I've always liked. 
but kind of forgotten about, so I've looked back at him. So I've really simplified this, but it's still got, I hope, a kind of presence of why are the clouds red? Why is the sky that color? It's, is there something apocalyptic about, about to happen? I think I must be obsessed with apocalypses. <laughs> and this one, portent, it's quite blurry. It's almost like there's smoke or something. And uh, it's kind of uncanny how sometimes you paint something and then you hear about like the fires that were happening in California. Um, I wasn't thinking about that at the time that I painted this, but there's kind of like a, a connection there anyway. So <clears throat> I'm into the last few now. Puddle on the left hand side. There's a puddle in the fields that is always there apart from when it's really dry and it reflects. I quite often take videos of it with the clouds going over and raindrops falling. But on this occasion, it was uh, the sunset. <clears throat> it had rained previously, so all the bits of water were just reflecting this incredible sunset. The one on the right, the found thing. I wander across the fields and I sort of poke into all the, the places where the farmers sort of dump stuff. I quite like this one, this kind of almost like a mushroom shape. So it's an unnatural thing with a natural shape. I haven't finished this painting yet. I've still got a bit more to do on it. Um, if I'm going anywhere and take my sketchbook with me, if my partner's driving, obviously I don't sketch when I'm driving, um, but on the one on the left, we were, we were going down to Bristol to see my daughter and I saw this pipe, which just caught my eye as we were traveling through Birmingham. And I've just, I've called it flare stack, which is when they burn off oil, which is very polluting. And I've given it this kind of um, tendril sort of going around it, like it's a living thing. Um, and just set it, so it dancing above the water. The one on the right, earthworks, again, sort of looking down at the ground, looking at sort of marks from people's footprints, bricks in the ground, bits of rusting metal. Uh, again, I've painted this one over a um, previously painted piece, so it's got lots and lots of texture to it. I've just sold that piece, which was very nice. Um, quite a lot of colour in my work. I've actually toned both of these down because they were much brighter. But this is a, a culvert. This is the sort of like big concrete pipe that the farmers put in as the way to culvert the stream. But I like the way nature sort of like taking itself is beginning to grow around it and take it over and naturalize it. On the right hand side, debris. This is what you find sort of in the farmers' fields these days. People, if there's nobody around, people just dump stuff. Farmers dump stuff as well. But it's it's for me, it's a sort of opportunity to to make a painting. Um, the next two are unfinished. I'm not quite sure about these. I have simplified them a little bit, but um, I think they, they need more work on them. And then this one, this one started off as a painting of a, this amazing little blue shed on wheels in, in one of the farmer's fields. I couldn't get the shed right, but I really liked the two little pebbles down here. So I'm sort of beginning to get into painting a bit more where I'm not sort of concentrating so much on, on the thing or what it's about. <clears throat> I was listening at the time to a, a lecture by Thomas Noskowski, um, which is well worth listening to. He's a really lovely man and he was talking about edges. And I quite, so I sort of having these pebbles within the painting, I painted the two extreme ones so they're going off and I give that, I think that gives the painting a different presence. I called it the Sisyphus Six because everybody feels sorry for Sisyphus having to push this, this pebble up the hill and, and then it rolls down again. And I was thinking, what about the poor pebble? You know, the pebble doesn't have any choice in being pushed up and down the hill. And of course there's six pebbles there, so that's like got its title. And then this is the last one. It's the last thing that I painted. I picked out one of my garden meditation pieces, this one on the left, and I really didn't like it. It was just fussy and cluttered with, it was too cartoon-like. And I think this is probably about the third time that I've just been completely absorbed 
with painting, not really thinking about the subject, but just trying to create something that worked, worked in terms of colour. So it's crepuscule, it's, it's that twilight time that we get here in the UK between daytime and nighttime, which you don't get in a lot of other places. I'm just trying to capture that. And again, this idea that it's, it's this tended garden, but it's about to be overgrown. Nature's about to sort of explode out. Anyway, that's it. That's my, um, I'll stop the share now. There we go. So that's wonderful, Jane. I really enjoyed that. I, I would, I'd really like to know, um, do you work on many works at once or is it? Uh, yes, so, singularly. with oil paints, because they take so long to dry. And I, I, I quite often use almond oil to mix the oil paints with. So they, <laughs> they take a hell of a long time to dry. Um, wow. But somebody's just introduced me something called Lequin, which I haven't used before. Um, so I'm going to get hold of some of that. She said it dries, but what, what the reason I use the almond oil is because I want to keep that that beautiful kind of sheen that oil paint has. I think mm -hmm. if you mix it with turps or the thinners, it tends to sort of deaden um, right. the, rich, the richness of the oil paint. But then it's working out where you can dry everything as well. But then well, it's working out where you can dry everything. Oh. <laughs> <What's happening? laughs> I don't know what happened there. Well, I, I, that's why I'm in, I have everything hanging up in my studio or just stacked up against the walls. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm going to try liquid and, and hopefully that, you know, that will work and things will dry a bit more quickly. Because I, I, I just, I painted with acrylics. And I just, I don't know, I just find them a bit too plasticky and they dry too quickly and you can't move the paint around. Yeah, uh, it's quite different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love your 3D work, the amulets in particular, and I love the way your practice sort of smoothly goes from 2D to 3D and it's, it's sort of in between, isn't it? It's... Yes, yeah. I mean, I, I've just kind of, from my last review, which was with, with a guest mentor, um, she before she suggested it, I was already thinking that I'm probably going to because I still collect plastic off the fields and I've got a whole bucket full outside and a whole load in my studio. I'm thinking about creating some more small sculptures and, and using those again for making more paintings. Yeah. But to be honest, I've got so many other paintings that I've, since doing Terps, I look at them and think, no, I need to, I need to work on them more. I'm probably going to spend more time you know, doing, doing that as well. Yeah, you're very prolific. It's an impressive body of work it's really good oh thank you somebody's mm -hmm. asked, do i know forest best that, I was, that was me some of you did some very simple ones sorry <clears throat> and that they had forest best is sort of a very strange character but he had quite sort of spiritual eminence eminence coming from the the simplest the forms the very very in, in a sparse economy of means he created this kind of and i just felt some of, you did one with that pipe and then the one you showed before the pipe it was like a red jagged red jagged lines right yes the red cloud it reminded me of of that there's something quite um you feel imminence or something of your work right oh yes that's, something that's... about to come out come at you yes <laughs> Well, that's how I feel. Yes. <laughs> I think, I mean, you know, I've got, I've got three kids and I've got four grandkids and another one on the way. And I, and I just worry for them about the future. And I think, you know, talking to other artists, the beauty about being part of a studio group, which, which I am with just 14 artists in my studio group, is that we, we, we talk to one another about things. I mean, and one of the things that we always say is you never know what your artwork is about. So months and months, maybe years later, mm. and you think, oh God, yes, that was what was running through my head at the time. And it's it sort of comes out, it's quite uncanny, really. <laughs> so when so when we, you know, when artists are asked what what's your work about, I think most 
well, the majority of artists I speak to will say, I haven't got a clue, really, until <laughs> later on. I don't know if anybody else feels like that. I think that's really interesting because yeah. I think someone like Frank Walters and Forrest Bess, who were like outsider artists, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, it's not to label the, well, people do label, that's the label people put on these characters. There's something in their work that is unabashed about that, not that kind of search and, and sort of uh, energy that's something else that's, that feels very um, vital and important mm. because maybe they don't have so much knowledge and words and stuff. And I think sometimes getting past all that just to something else that you can't, is outside of language. Well, it, it's, it's, it's important. That, yeah. Because yeah. I, I went to art college in 1970 and I dropped out. Basically yeah. part of the reason I dropped out was because as a female at that particular time, you didn't really get any respect. It's like, oh, you'll get married, have kids, you won't be, you know. And then when I joined the studio group, that when the studio group that which I ended up establishing, it was already there. There were a couple of people in. I ended up doing the admin. But one of the artists said to me, Oh, women artists will never be as good as male artists. And I was I was completely incensed. Yeah. But then you said, right, okay, name me 10 artists. And I couldn't do it. And I, I was really, really cross that I got myself into a situation where I'd lost the argument. <laughs> so I went away and that's when I started to research female painters. And, and I've done talks with a, an art historian about, I just dug and dug and dug. And there are female artists coming out of the seams. I mean, people sort of write and talk a lot about them now. But what, what I'm saying is that I suppose because I left art college then, but I carried on working, I'm almost like an outsider artist because I taught myself. Uh, I eventually did an MA from 2008 to 2010. Um, with I did it collaboratively with a filmmaker, and I did sort of more of the admin side and the and the ideas side of things. Um, but yeah, I, I am self-taught really. I would say that I've learned more from doing this Terps course than I ever learned in mm. art education. Mm. I think that speaks volumes. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I feel like that about the Terps course as well, it really kind of just pushes you in different directions. Um, I think like Sarah said, there's something kind of otherworldly or unusual, especially about your um, landscapes in the back garden. I just thought they're amazing. It's like, there's this glow of green or there's this kind of very unusual cold light of a sunset, but it's it's not realistic. And the fact that it's not realistic just adds to it. It's so like mm -hmm. interesting, you know, um, like oversized uh, bushes and funny shaped trees and stuff like that. I just think it's it's really different, kind of really edgy and very visually fascinating. Oh, I think lovely. they're really, really good. Yeah. It's really nice to have some feedback <laughs> as well. <laughs> Gen Jennifer Higgy's just written a book called The Other Side. Have you seen that? No, who's that, Jennifer? <clears throat> Jennifer Higgy. I, I just picked it up yesterday I, and dipped into it. But it is about looking at female artists who are looking at more of the spiritual, numinous, I don't know, whatever you call this, other something mm. well, yes. ineffable i don't know what it is what, 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 what some people call it soul i don't know but i yeah. find that that's uh, the female artists maybe you know it is their moment for all this stuff isn't it have you seen the the tate those tate textile works mm. oh um the abacan yes one. amazing yeah I, I, i've not i've seen one in man well, there was one in manchester a few yeah. years that I went to see so I haven't, I haven't been to the to the Tate show but um, I am aware of her work and it's just fantastic yeah I, I think that I do think that the female has a a much more a bigger connection with the earth because of the fact that we we we, we reproduce <laughs> maybe that's why mm -hmm. I don't know 
and, and I and, and also because we, we began as as gatherers, so we we had always had that sort of really strong connection with seeing color um, and gathering things around us, that sort of very observant. Mm. Uh, whereas the male hunter is a very very different way of of, of thinking and working, and, and and our brains have developed quite different differently as a, as a result of that. That makes sense. Mm. Mm. You're gathering, aren't you? Your plastics, and then you're transforming. There's an act of transformation of something from one thing into another, and then another act of translation of That's, the yeah. sculpture into the painting, into the. But I think where you'd reduce the form, that red, that red um, zigzaggy one. Yeah. Like you'd taken everything else out, like. And had that gone back, that does a, that's a process, isn't it? The reduction, yes. Another taking away. There's a taking away that can happen that then can nail it in a in a kind of in a different way. Yes, I, I think that's. Mm. I've, I find now some of the more recent ones that I showed you that they're too cluttered. Yeah, I've, I've begun to sort of like clear areas, so that you you're not looking at a sort of jumble and a clutter. Which is what my brain is like. <laughs> I, well, I sympathise. Because <laughs> you just want to put everything in all at once. Yes. Mm. I think that's part of our, maybe our wiring. I don't know. But that I just saw that there's something about that reductive thing when you sort of, as if that's the thing, that's the thing you've, you're going to hang your hat on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can spread bet, can't you? I can you can spread bet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello. So, yeah. well, that's really good feedback from you. Thank you very much. So I think if we're all done, that was uh, Elaine, fantastic. Yeah, yeah really, that was brilliant. Really enjoyed thank you. Um, so thank you everybody for um for watching us. And apart from the blip, I'm very sorry about that. That was fine. <laughs> Hopefully the emergence. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. Yeah. yeah thanks for thank coming. Inspiring. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for coming to the party. <laughs>